of 7 and how you are going to analyze whether the given strain is semen or not so there are different components that you have studied in the previous video that uh, what are the different components of the semen and these components can be examined individually to know whether the given stain is semen or not so although a number of more components are there within the semen apart from the th these one which are enlisted over here but why i have not told you in the uh, in the previous video as well as in this flowchart why is it not depicted because they are not used for the analysis of semen as they are the commonest one which could be present in the other body fluids like seminal vesicle used to produce fructose ascorbic acid and bicarbonate likewise prostate gland used to produce cholesterol citric acid zinc acid fibrinolysin and moreover there is a bulbourethral gland which is present in the male reproductive organ this also contribute to the semen by providing a mucus clear mucus that contribute around 5% of the semen so here one by one i am going to cover all the components and and how are you going to analyze those components by what kind of test so first of all that i am going to cover is the flavin flavin is the component is, is an organic compound which is present in the semen that is produced from the seminal vesicles so this flavin has a tendency to fluoresce under uv so here you can see that flavin uh, causes semen to fluoresce under uv and often utilized when searching for the semen stain that is it's a presumptive solely presumptive test here just by letting a light just by impinging the light on a suspected stain you would be able to see the fluorescence under uv light so based upon you would be able to know that whether the given stain uh, whether the given area in which in the given area which part does contain the semen so to locate the presence of semen in a given suspected area you can use the uv light you just have to impinge the uv light on the suspected area and the fluorescence will take place because of the presence of the flavin now the next test you are going to do is for the acid phosphatase acid phosphatase is an enzyme as the name depicts itself the suffix is ace that uh, shows that it is an enzyme and it used to hydrolyze the acid phosphate so because as it used to hydrolyze the acid phosphate so a chain a reaction is used in which the upon the hydrolysis of acid phosphate how does it react with some other molecule to produce some coloring agent like as i can show you in a flow chart uh, in this here you can see that alpha naphthyl phosphate is a compound that is used and uh, for the analysis uh, of the acid phosphatase here what you have to do is uh, you have to take this molecule and when it react with the acid phosphatase it is going to the property of acid phosphatase is to hydrolyze the uh, this compound to phosphate and alpha naphthol so upon reacting of uh, upon the reaction of this alpha naphthyl phosphate with acid phosphatase an alpha naphthol and a phosphate ion would be produced this alpha naphthol is going to react with some dye that is here we have used fast lube dye and this is going to produce a coloring reaction that is a coloring agent would be produced which is purple color azo dye so what happened in this case in the presence of acid phosphatase alpha naphthyl phosphate is hydrolyzed to alpha naphthol and phosphate ion subsequently the fast pp a stabilized diazonium salt is added to carry out an azo coupling reaction producing a purple azo dye likewise instead of using this phosphate group you can use a number of different phosphate groups but um, as acid phosphatase is going to hydrolyze that molecule the phosphate molecule um, and you have to use the respective dye that is going to react with the 
hydrolyzed part of that phosphate molecule to give a coloration reaction. The example of such phosphate molecule that could be used are thymopothalin monophosphate, phenyl monophosphate, phenyl phosphate, 4 nitrophenyl phosphate. But as in the previous reaction, you have used alpha sodium alpha naphthyl phosphate and this thymopothalin monophosphate are more specific to as as to sim, uh, prostate acid phosphatase as compared to these two things. Now, if you go with the properties of the acid phosphatase, it is generally high in concentration in the semen of a human. Whereas, although it is ubiquitous in nature, that is, it is found in other body fluids or in a other uh, mammalian in other uh, parts like mammalian liver or cauliflower stem juice so it may give the false positive test that is you may think that it is showing the positive reaction but it could be due to the presence of other things as well it is a qualitative test that is based upon this you would be able to know whether the given stain may have the chances of a presence of semen or not but you would not be able to know the quantity that is how much amount is there acid phosphatase as I told you the role of acid phosphatase it is an enzyme that catalyzes the hydrolysis of a organic phosphate okay and the last thing that where it produces it is produced from the epithelial cells that line the prostate gland so if you go with the other uh, properties so acid phosphatase used to be in high level uh, until the age of 40 years and one more thing all the components which are produced from the prostate gland if a person is suffering from prostate cancer then the, those uh, those components which are produced from the prostate glands are elevated in quantity as compared to the normal range the in those person the, the quantity of the respective component would be very high comparatively so it used to give the positive test for the old strain as well and even the person uh, if the person the given person is aspermia the given stain is aspermia uh, it means it lacks the sperm still it has the tendency to give the positive test because it is just because of the presence of acid phosphatase the half-life that is the same if you have a sample and it is uh, around six months old so it still has a tendency to give positive test because the half-life of acid phosphatase the half of the sample will take uh, time to the deterioration time is uh, around six months but at a 37 degrees celsius but it but if this condition is going to change that if you are going to provide the wet environment so the half-life may decrease and if you are going to put the dry seminal stain under minus 20 degrees celsius that is if you are going to preserve at minus 20 degrees celsius so it may retain as it is for one year at least so the next stain that uh, the next analysis that you can go for is the fluorometric assay this again this analysis is due to the presence of acid phosphatase itself but here instead of change in the color that is the molecule upon hydrolysis instead of producing a coupling reaction with the dye here you can see the fluorescence so here the reagent which you have used initially is methyl embalifiron phosphate so this methyl embalifiron phosphate is going to hydrolyze into the phosphate ion and 4 methyl embalifiron uh, compound so this compound has a property to fluoresce so by just uh, observe the reaction the result of the reaction is the fluorescence and this fluorescence could be uh, indicate the presence or the absence of the cement 